Hey, welcome to this tutorial series for view model animation in Maya. In this series we're going to be covering a few things to do with setting up some first person animation from uh, getting your gun imported and rigged to uh, doing some posing, setting up some constraints and then doing some animation. So hopefully by the end of it you'll have a nice understanding of the whole process and how to do some really cool reloads in Maya. If you want to find some gun models then Sketchfab is a great place to start. Just make sure you tick downloadable to see the ones you can actually grab. Game Banana is a great resource for some older models. And Turbo Squid, just make sure you search for free models because there's a lot of paid ones on there. Now the model we're going to be using is the AK from FromNetNet, if that's pronounced correctly. Uh, that's provided in the description with all the files and textures you need. Now just make sure when you're using any models that you credit the person who made them. It's usually under a CC attribution non-commercial license, so just make sure you follow that and you should be all good. So let's get started. Now I'm working in Maya version 2020.2, but any version as long as it's modern will work just fine. Let's just quickly check our up axis. So if you come up to Windows and then Settings slash Preferences, Preferences, then the Settings category. Now the standard is Y up, which is what we'll be using, but some models and rigs use Z up. So if you import something and it's facing the wrong way, just make sure you flip it from either Z to Y or Y to Z, depending on what you need. And to fix the camera after you do this, just open up a new scene or press Alt Home. So let's get our gun imported. Come up to File, then Import. If you're following along with the content in the description, just go to that folder, and then the AK files, and then grab your AK object and import. Now this AK does have a couple different pieces, so come back up to File, Import, and just grab the AK MS Gadget object uh, to add to that. We won't be needing this spare bullet and shell, so we can just select that and delete. So let's get some textures onto this gun. Uh, if you select your body and then hold right click and go down to assign favorite material then Lambert, uh, we've got a new material assigned to that. If you don't have the attribute editor on the side there, just come up to Windows, General Editors, and you've got all your different windows you can bring back up if you lose them. Let's quickly rename this material to something like AK underscore body underscore mat for material, just to keep things nice and organized. Then come down here to the color attribute and just click this little checkered box and we'll get a pop-up window. Click on the file render note because we're adding a texture file and then come over to this folder icon over here and just navigate to wherever your textures are. So in the tutorial content folder it's just inside the AK files and then the TX folder. We just want to choose the AK to fuse and then open that. We can't actually see any textures in the viewport right now but to fix that just come up here to this little checkered sphere and enabling that will uh, turn on the textures in the viewport. Alright it's looking good so far but the other pieces of the gun have a secondary texture so we'll just shift select them and then add a new Lambert again and just do the same process with the secondary texture. We we'll want to choose the AKMS gadget diffuse for this one and just open that. Let's start separating out the meshes. Starting with the magazine, if you select that then press F you'll be able to focus in on it and orbit around it. If you hold right click and go to face select mode then you'll be able to see the different faces that make up the mesh. If you double click on a face it'll select the entire shell and you can just hold shift to select the other bullets as well. Up here in the poly modeling shelf we've got this extract button but it's also in the menu up here edit mesh and down the bottom extract. That'll just take out all the shells from the mesh. Now you'll see that the bullets are separated from the magazine but we don't want them to be separated from each other. Unless you're doing some like really detailed animation we can just keep them as one object. So if you shift select them all then come up to mesh but before we click combine just open up this little options box on the right and then check that we have merge by name selected. By default the merge UV sets option will be set to no merge but we want to have this at merge by name otherwise the textures are going to break when we combine the objects. So now that the mag's done we can separate the pieces on the rest of the gun. We're going to do the trigger, the mag release, the bolt, the fire selector and let's also do this little sling mount on the stock here. Just make sure you get every single shell of the pieces you're separating. Some pieces might have multiple different parts that are disconnected, so just look out in case you miss any. You'll also have to combine them back together just like the bullets. Now that we've separated everything out, we want to delete the history on the meshes to keep things clean. So just select everything and then come up here to this delete history button. It's also in the edit menu under delete by type, history, uh, and the hotkey is alt shift d. Now it's cleaned up some of the nodes on the meshes but we also want to take them out of these groups so let's just select them all and then middle mouse drag them out of the groups and then delete the groups. Let's just give everything a rename to keep things nice and organized and then select everything except for the body then middle mouse drag it under the body just to make them children so things are nice and tidy. Let's start setting up some controls for this gun. 
If you come up to the create menu, NURBS primitives, the circle is really the only useful shape that we've got in here by default. If you want some more interesting shapes, I highly recommend picking up something like BS controls. I'll link it down in the description, but it's free. You can choose from a ton of different shapes, change the colors and do all sorts with it. I'm just gonna be using this cube shape for all my controls and I'll just set that to a nice yellow color. So the first thing we want to do before we do anything else with this control is just group it with control G or up in the edit menu group. So what that means is we can move the group around and position it where we want uh, but the control itself will have all clean channels for translate and rotate and scale just because we haven't touched that and it's still a child of that group. So let's move it into place for the mag. Something in the center is nice and handy. Control D or shift D to duplicate it and let's bring it up here for the bullets. If you select the shape itself rather than the group, then go into your right click menu and choose control vertex. You can actually edit the vertices themselves in the shape, scale them around, shape them however you want to make it look nice around the bullets. And you'll just want to repeat this for all the different moving parts of your gun. For this mag release, I'm doing a little bit of scaling and rotation of the control itself before editing the vertices. You just want to make sure that you've got your pivot point in the right place so that it rotates correctly. Now because I did some adjustments to the control itself, it's got some values on its channels. So to clear them out, you'll just want to come up here to the Freeze Transformations button. It's also in the Modify menu under Freeze Transformations. So we'll just go ahead and duplicate these and position them for all the different moving parts. Most people keep the shapes of the controls nice and simple, but occasionally you'll find something more detailed. So if you want to do something a little bit more fancy, feel free to do that. We're going to want a second mag just to give us some options when animating reloads in the future. So just select your control groups and your meshes and duplicate them out. Make sure you are selecting the groups of the controls, not the controls themselves. So don't select them in the viewport, get them in the outliner. It's always a good idea to go through all your controls and just make sure their channels are frozen. You don't want anything creeping up on you in the future. And ideally the groups will be the only things that contain the garbage values that we don't need. Let's just quickly rename everything to be nice and organized. Now let's start setting up the skeleton for the gun. Just going to come over here to the drop down and change it from modeling to rigging. Then up here in the skeleton menu I'm going to choose create joints and then just click in the viewport to add a joint. I'm renaming this one to the AK root joint. And at this point I realized I didn't actually add a master control for the gun, which is no good. So I'm going to come up here to the create menu and go nerves primitives and just create a circle. I'm going to quickly group it and then scale it up and rotate it to make sure it's the right size. Then move the group itself over to where I want the control to be positioned. Let's quickly select the circle, then freeze the transformations, and now it's nice and clean. Give it a quick rename and rename the group as well. Alright, let's start setting up the skeleton. If you select your root joint and then your master control, then come up to modify, match transformations, and then click match all transforms. That'll just snap the root joint to the master control. You can also do this by creating a parent constraint making sure that maintain offset is turned off in the options box and then that'll teleport the joint to the control then just delete the constraint afterwards. Now you'll see that we can't actually see our joint in the viewport and that's obviously because it's inside the gun mesh. So to make things easier let's just turn on this joint x-ray button and then you'll be able to see all your joints through any of the meshes. If the joint is showing as too big or too small you can change the radius of uh, specific joints over here in the channel box. You can also come up here to display animation joint size just to change the overall joint size of the scene. All right now it's just a case of duplicating this root joint and uh, snapping it to all the other controls just so that they're centered at the pivot of those controls and to do this you could use the match transforms button in the menu uh, or the parent constraint trick or you could find a script that allows you to snap between different objects it's a super handy thing to be able to do and I highly recommend something like Animbot which can handle that and a ton of other things really easily. I've got my own custom scripts that I use for this which I'll put down in the description with some details about how to use them. So we're just duplicating the joints and snapping them to all the different controls. And once we're done we're going to want to select all of the joints except for the original root one that we made and then drag them into that to make them children. Now you'll see that's created this little web of joints. It means they're all connected to the root and that's what we want. Let's give them all a quick rename so we know which ones they are. And we just want to make sure that the bullet joints are children of their respective mag joints as well. Just because we want the bullets following the mag which is following the gun um, to make it a nice little chain. Alright, time to connect the skeleton to the meshes. Still in the rigging menu set, if you come up to skin and then open up the options menu for the bind skin. And you just want to make sure you've got it to bind to selected joints and just have the max influences set to 1. Select the joint, then the mesh, and then bind skin. 
So like a lot of the steps in this setup, we're going to just repeat this for all the different joints and meshes. Now you will get an error pop up if you do the body last. That's just because all the other meshes are children of the body uh, and they've already got the other joints bound to them. Maya will complain about that. Now everything is connected and we can move it around. Now the final step is to make the controls move the joints around because we want to be animating the controls themselves instead of the joints. In uh, programs like Blender, you'll actually be animating the joints themselves directly, but that's not the case here in Maya. You can do a lot of nice fancy setups if you create controls for things instead. So for this step, we want to select our control first and then the joint. Let's come up to constraint and then open up the parent constraint options box. Now a lot of the time you want the maintain offset option turned on, but in this case it doesn't really matter because uh, you've already snapped the joints to the controls anyway. Add the constraint and then you'll see if you move the control around, it'll move the joint and the mesh with it. Now you guessed it, we're going to repeat this for all the other parts of the gun as well. <laughs> So selecting the control, then the joint, and then parent constraint. If you swap to the rigging shelf up the top here, you've actually got a constraint button, so you can use that for all your repetitive tasks. All right, all the constraints are set up, but you'll see if we move our master control, uh, nothing else follows it, which is no good. Let's start by making sure the bullets are following their respective mags. So if you select the bullet group and then drag it into the mag control, that'll make it a child and it'll follow around everywhere it goes. Let's do this for the second mag as well. And we also want to do this for all the other gun parts into the master control. Now you'll see all the other gun parts are following the gun, which is good. And the mags are staying put. If you want to connect the mags to the gun, the best way to do this is to select the master control first and then the mag group, not the control, the group. And then create a parent constraint and that'll work perfectly fine. Usually it's a good idea to have one mag connected and one mag in world space. You can also set up a space switch attribute on your mags if you want some more control of them when animating, but that's not something that I'm going to be covering this series. Alright, now you'll see that we can move everything and rotate everything fine, but as soon as we try and scale it, uh, things break a little bit. If you want to be able to scale your rigs, you'll want to do the same process that you did for creating the parent constraints, except with a scale constraint. So you'll just select the control and then its joint and then create a scale constraint. It looks like when I was doing this I missed a couple of them accidentally, so it's good to double check everything and make sure you cover every single control uh, just so you don't have anything uh, that's been forgotten. Now we can tidy up the outliner now that everything's done by closing up all the groups. If you select all your control groups and then group them again, you can have a, a nice tidy single group for your controls. And then the same thing for your geo if you want. Display layers are also a great way to keep things nice and tidy in your scene. I'm going to create one for the geo for the controls and for the skeleton. Now make sure you save this so you don't lose any of your hard work and I recommend the my ASCII format over the my binary. And that's everything you need to know for setting up a weapon rig. This hasn't covered every possible thing you could do. Uh, it's a very simple rig and it's definitely not the most optimized. But if it's just for personal animations for fun then it's perfectly fine. You could even just forgo the skeleton and constrain your meshes straight to your controls. If anything in this video is a little bit over your head, I highly recommend checking out some kind of basic Maya tutorials just to get an understanding of how everything works. And if anyone wants a kind of long format video that's unedited and goes through the entire process while describing everything, uh, just let me know in the comments and I can definitely do that. In the next episode of this series, we're going to look into setting up your scene with your arm rig and your gun rig and doing some posing and constraints uh, to prepare for animation. Thanks for watching.